Welcome back to the DD Performance Research MRT Squared Project. Uh, this is the evening of Thursday, July 13th. It's about uh, 10 something. Uh, just wrapping up for the night and I uh, wanted to give you a quick video update because it's been way too long. And sorry for the break, but uh, we've been super busy trying to get the car done. So here you have our, uh, our two turbo manifolds that come off the uh, engine. You can see that they look a bit different from before. They have been coated with polydyne ceramic coating. It's a titanium color, that's why they look great. And uh, then on top of that, you also have an additional heat shields product, uh, heat shield design for, uh, for turbo and exhaust manifolds. It's a uh, 1800 degree continuous use with uh, 2200 degree uh, uh, temporary use rating. And uh, it's installed on both manifolds there. Just really quick, show you. You have to actually install some rivets on there. We had to get a grommet press and uh, they get wired together. And that's how you get them to stay on. And later on down the road when we get to phase two, we'll probably get some custom fitted ones made up, but for the time being, that's what we're going with. All right, so you can see here, we've got our uh, engine wiring harness is just about done. Uh, that's what I've been up to designing it and then building it the last uh, week and change. And you can see just one or two of those little leads still need a little bit of loom put on them, but for the most part, it is done and ready to go back in the car. Uh, here's a couple of these exhaust pieces, uh, just so you can see the uh, ceramic coating color without any obstruction from a heat shield. It's uh, again polydyne titanium color. And you can see we had the uh, turbine housing done as well. Then here's a couple other parts with a little different heat shielding applied. This is the turbo collector and uh, that's, that's the part that goes right up into the turbo. That comes from the front manifold, that comes from the back manifold. And uh, so this is a uh, also a heat shield products uh, heat shield. It's a uh, stainless steel with a like half inch uh, fiberglass back and it's uh, clamped and taped in place. And uh, that's the up pipe right there. And there you see one of our two coolant lines. This is the, uh, it's a dash 20 AM line. So it's a pretty big, pretty big line. Just to give you an idea for scale, you can see it's pretty huge. Um, so, and that's got a DEI uh, fire tube heat shield on there. So that's like a uh, silicone rubber with a, uh, about a quarter inch of fiberglass on it. So really, really cool stuff. Um, so coming over to the car real quick, a couple of things. You can see we've got a jump stud now. Uh, that's for the battery relocation and also so that if you are nose into a parking spot and the battery's dead, uh, you can jump it. Obviously you can see the mock-up motor is gone. We're done with that. Brand new mounts in there. Those are the Innovate uh, 95 durometer mounts. Uh, we may go to something softer if they have too much vibration, but we did that so that they wouldn't be moving around with all the torque. Uh, you can see we got uh, all our primer on there for the pieces we added. The air box is done, obviously. You can see, yay! See the inlet. Then coming over here, we have a couple of cool things going on. So you can see we've got our roll hoops back in the car, obviously. You have our Recaro seat with the uh, Sparco four point harnesses, which looks awesome. Uh, they'll have matching seats, obviously. This one's out for while we're working on the wiring. And then you have our uh, Link G4 Fury. It's the engine management system we're going to be using. And that's what I've been working on the harness for tonight. Uh, you can see I've got uh, all the harnessing to it is done. I've got all the pins already crimped on the end. I just need to put them in the mill specs. Got a few more wires that have to be added uh, for the body harness and then I'll plug those in. And then this is how the mill spec connectors are going to be set up for the engine to body connection. So they'll be mounted right there and then they'll take those connectors from the engine side and then the other set of connectors from the vehicle side all right then we're getting ready to put the digital dash in that'll go in tomorrow as well and then you can see we've got some stuff done there on the air suspension we have done the uh, all the wiring the control units installed uh, all the actuators are wired up, the sensors are wired up. And you can see we've added a circuit breaker and a fuse block for some of the additional components we're adding to the car. And everything is finally installed in the front. So, and you can also see you've got the uh, zero gauge wire there, which is run all the way from the front to the back. And that's uh, what's going to power the starter and everything else in the back of the car. And then one or two last little things. Oh, speaking of the uh, air suspension, we also added these guys. Uh, these are actually height sensors. So. Uh, what they do is as the suspension travels up and down that arm pivots and that reports the, the height of the vehicle and uh, that allows the system to keep the vehicle equalized. So like if uh, 
one side has a little higher load than the other, rather than just relying on a pressure in the air suspension, it'll actually be able to adjust based on height as well. Really nice system from RideTech. So here's our uh, engine. We've got a couple additions on there before I wrap up for the night. You can see we've added this heat shield that goes on the front side over the uh, exhaust manifold. That uh, uh, hose I showed you earlier, the coolant line goes right over the top here. And then you can see we also have a dipstick. So it's got a half inch NPT fitting we welded on on the bottom. It's a braided stainless steel. We've added a DEI heat shield over the top of that because it does sit right next to that manifold. And uh, it's kind of cool here at the end. Um, so this thing actually locks into place and you just have to push in on that little release collar. And that's what allowed the dipstick to come out. And you can see it's a uh, braided stainless just like the uh, regular MR2. So it slides in and out real smooth without any issues despite having to go around some pretty cool bends. All right, so that's pretty much it, y'all. Thanks so much for uh, joining us once again. Hope y'all have a great night, and uh, I'll have another video for you either tomorrow or uh, Saturday with some pictures of the uh, car all put together.